Brittany O'Neill. I am a director here at BJ. Uh, we do a wide range of things from media relations, the development of content, working with creative directors, creating pitches for media, and all of the above. Uh, Don Martelli, president and partner. I've been with the firm for 10 years, former reporter for the Boston Globe. And my uh, one of my responsibilities here is to sort of architect a lot of our public relations campaigns, manage our reputation management efforts, as well as crisis communications. And outside of that, just uh, managing relationships for clients. PR has evolved within the last decade really rapidly from the early 2000s of introducing social media to now with social media being part of everyone's daily diet. Uh, it's created a place where media is constantly in your face. And it's not just about the getting into the New York Times. It's not just about local papers, but using those opportunities and lengthening them. It's about creating content that is in the 24 news hour cycle, but then can also be able to be reused as digital ads, as newspaper our news articles be used as uh, your blog posts. So it's about trying to stretch as much content as the media wins you get. Yeah, I agree there, Brett. I think um, past five years, past year, past 10 years, it's just speed. There's so much content out there now um, between, you know, 24-7 uh, news channels, social media, individuals becoming their own form of media, right? Folks that have a sphere of influence are becoming media experts, um, whether it be in the work we do with developers where you're dealing with members of the community that have their own following on social media or being able to record things live and produce them and send them to a news outlet within seconds. It's just the speed of which PR happens these days um, is just much, much faster than, as it has been ever. And I think that will continue. And I think the other way this change is, you know, the traditional media uh, is sort of under siege, right? Your traditional print media is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. There's less reporters um, and they're covering different things. They have responsibilities outside of just writing for the paper. They have to be on social media, produce video content. Um, so just this consolidation, there's speed, and there's just monotonous information that's out there every single second of the day. And as PR professionals, our job is to try to stay ahead of this tidal wave that just continues to rage on. So uh, it's a it's a fast paced environment. But the good thing is that we're, you know, always learning new things, always learning new tricks to get in front of reporters, ideating around good content. So I think in the next five years, we'll have another conversation where a number of different things will change. But that's the beauty of what we do. It's just this. It's always evolving. So the Belfort Group is a service-based organization, meaning we focus on the services that we provide to our clients versus focusing on industries. When you think about the BG Strategies Group, which provides the PR services, there's a whole slew of things that are in that bucket that we do. Um, I always joke that we either keep clients in the media, or in some cases, we keep them out of the media. Um, so if I were to layer back the onion, um, we do a lot of proactive thought leadership, right? working with our clients to make sure that their executives, C-suite or content experts are in them, all forms of media, speaking about you know, trends, topics, things that are happening now, but bridging over to their company and their area of expertise. We always do a lot of reactive media. So there's reporters always calling us or reaching out to us, looking for sources for their stories. Um, but we also do reputation management, you know, so work that is specifically designed to impact a company's reputation in some way, shape, or form. So if that's higher ed, oftentimes we're pitching stories that are geared towards creating visibility for that particular school to help influence you know, rankings. Or in some cases, we are trying to influence political decision makers to say yes to a project. So thought leadership, proactive, reactive media, reputation management, a lot of crisis communications work. And that's either when a client's in the middle of an issue that they're getting inundated with either phone calls, emails from reporters or the community, 
in some cases, we work with clients and helping them prepare for a crisis, even though they might not be in a crisis, but walking them through the paces. What does it mean about a holding statement, uh, workflows, who's in touch, who's the spokesperson, what's the holding statement look like? What do you do with your website? What do you do on social media? So when people think about PR these days, it's not just dealing with the media, it's thought leadership, it's awards, it's speaking opportunities, anything that we can do to positively position our clients and their experts favorably in front of the public and the relationship to which we create, that's PR. And as I said before, it's really earning media through you know pitching and talking to reporters, but there's a number of layers in there, but generally it fits within those three buckets, reputation management, uh, crisis communications and you know proactive slash reactive public relations. PR, when it comes to an organization, a nonprofit, a business, is about finding the stories that you want to share. So it's about who are your audiences. If you are in a economy where you can't hire and you're trying to find new people to hire, innovative ways. It's about highlighting the amazing careers and the amazing people that work for your company. That goal is to inspire someone to read a newspaper article about the amazing person working at X company, such as, let's say, Bridgewell, one of our amazing clients that's a nonprofit, and learning the stories and the impacts of that person could be my colleague or I could be that person working at that company. So you are able to drive people to apply or get hired from your organization based on a PR strategy. Let's say your goal is to get new clients. Uh, having a organization um, such as they were working with a client unity, and their goal is to get clients in the diversity space. So finding PR opportunities to get thought leadership out that impacts that field. So when a person is working for, let's say, Microsoft and they're having a diversity issue, they see a Wall Street Journal article with an expert our clients, the expert, and they reach out to our client for the idea of, hey, can you work with me? Can I hire you? And then there's the idea of, let's say, universities and colleges, and Don speaks really eloquently on this, about how do we get kids at a university? How do we get inspire parents to send their check to, let's say, Merrimack, um, where Don's lovely daughter is going, or even Rowan University. It's about highlighting the really cool things that happen or the programs that they have. So something I recently saw, which I'm slightly jealous of that I never did, at Rowan University, they have a, my alma mater, a program where they're digging and they're finding dinosaur bones. Well, that's an amazing story that the local newspaper can pick up. Oh, wow. What else can we talk about in that space? So when, uh, Brittany O'Neill at 17 years old is looking, what do I want to be one day? She's inspired by a career that's directly linked to the university. So it's about finding those immediate awesome stories that we can inspire other people to either go, go work, work for, hire, or apply. Another thing I'd add here with um, the services we provide is oftentimes the work we're doing in PR really never hits the media. Uh, so we've had situations where a company is having, you know, uh, a particular issue that's happening within their world, and they need to communicate to a variety of audiences about a change that's happening or a leadership change or a merger. So oftentimes what we're producing for the client in terms of deliverables is messaging, emails, talking points, and helping, you know, this executive communicate to your, her 3,000 employees around the world about, this potential merger or going public. It's oftentimes the, the deliverables of things we're sort of creating is content and it's either for the media, it's all for organic channels. And sometimes the stuff we produce really never sees the light of day, but it's really helping a particular company, person, individual expert communicate to another in just a variety of forms. And like I said before, sometimes it could be just internal communication as well. So PR is a pretty thick onion, if you will. And I think as you layer it back, it still comes down to, as Brittany mentioned before, good content, good messaging, and good stories. So there's two ways you can go about, I think, adding PR. You could add PR at the beginning, or you could add PR at the end. I think PR at the beginning allows you to get produced great articles that you can reuse for digital media. 
So we're talking about the hiring situation. If a company is looking to hire clients and we get a media win for them, they can now use that um, either boost or create a campaign where that article is risen and people are able to view it on their website. Let's say we throw it on their website, add an apply button, and then we can increase traffic to their website with this amazing story. Or if your goal is brand awareness, um, you can grab that Wall Street article that we have an expert in and try to enhance and get more views on that. So making a digital campaign that is around her being as expert or doing a tweet with social media to say, hey, I met with this reporter, read this report, is all great ways to say, hey, we have this content on this website, either it's a broadcast piece or it's a print piece or a digital interview. And let's try as many ways as possible, get more people to see this and then do the actionable item. Again, as I said, apply, hire them as a company or send them to a cool school that we're working for. Then in the sense of media relations, I think it extremely helps when you have a solid digital plan that is in local communities that enhances when we do reach out to, let's say, a reporter or a news network or a producer over at your morning show, that when they Google the brand or if they search the brand, they'll see the amazing opportunities that we have. They'll see the Facebook posts. They'll see the digital ad. They'll be tracked themselves when they head to a website the reporter might be on the New York Times website and then on the side, it has a client of ours that jogs their memory. So when we do reach out to them, they'll already know the brand. So it's a kind of like dual process and it extremely needs to be paired one and one. You can't do one effectively without the other. Yeah, I think when it comes to, you know, today's PR world and the intersection of digital marketing, um, you know, at BG, we are solely focused on this integrated platform that allows us to leverage any channel at any given time. And I think PR's role in today's sort of message heavy, you know, always on media environment is really third party validation, right? Um, I think consumers are smarter about advertising. They know when they're being spoken to, they realize when they're being force fed the, the plate of broccoli they don't wanna eat, right? And so what do they do? They, they look at reviews. They ask their neighbors, they, they use word of mouth and they just crowdsource, whether it be, you know, looking for somebody to refinance your home or if you're moving or going to school, looking to support a project. There's so much information out there that PR has turned into this third party party validator um, asset where, for example, when we are working with a senior living company uh, uh, organization that is trying to convince adult children that, hey, go have a conversation with mom and dad and convince them to sell their 5,000 square foot home and move into the senior, the senior care facility. Um, oftentimes, those personal decisions, like talking to your parents about moving out of the home that you grew up in and living somewhere else are emotional decisions. And these folks will do their research. They'll go online, they'll re read reviews. But if you're seeing positive articles in the local newspaper about you know Mary Smith, who's lived to 110 and she's one of the, the first, um, you know, people in the community to speak out about racism going back to 1920s. I mean, those stories are powerful and really make people feel like, okay, my decision to send mom and dad here is great. Or, you know, I wanna, I'm looking at 15 different schools, my my oldest daughter, and she decides to go into the nursing program. And I see stories about kids that have traveled to London or India or Japan and have worked in nursing, um, nursing environments or worked in ERs where these, countries need additional nursing help and they're getting this worldly experience to help other people's you know other people while they're where they live and doing it in a way that is global different languages and having that experience and telling those stories maybe, maybe that story didn't convince you know my daughter to go to school but it absolutely impacted wow geez she'll have the opportunity to travel and take her skills and apply it in this other fashion versus just working in you know greater boston for example so i think you know pr like i said i, and I, I joked about it but it's legit you either we keep clients in the media or we keep them out of it but more often times more often not we're 90 percent of the time doing about keeping clients in the media and it's really about third-party validation and telling those good stories and and frankly i mean Brittany alluded to it before every good positive pr story is 
you know, a thousand percent great fodder for marketing, right? So that, you know, if your thought leader speaks on the phone with a New York Times reporter for a half hour and the article includes three to four quotes, but there's all this other stuff that was left in the cutting room floor, you can take that content, write a new blog post, link to the New York Times article, and that post can now go on that company's website. That blog post could then be pushed through social. It can now become a digital asset. You put a little paid media behind to, to kind of push forward that third party validation. So I think the only way, and Brittany said this before, that all of this works is when all the channels are in sync, like an, like an orchestra, right? I think PR is really, again, about good stories, good content, but you got to bring that down further into the funnel because while PR may get the phone to ring and, and maybe help close deals, I think it just creates that, that bucket of content that you can use in digital marketing to do all the all the uh, all the things all the cool kids do these days, but you know, retargeting, informing SEO, um, paid social media campaigns, informing Google Ads, all the stuff that really gets people to click and fill out forms and engage and buy. PR is just that middle to upper funnel third party validation, and and again, it, it's still regardless of it's 2022 or you know 19 so and so forth when I started in this business, it's still about good content and good stories. So I think PR in the next five years is still the wild, wild west. Um, there's a reason why I love this business and PR in particular. It reminds me of working in the newsroom where no day is ever the same. You have no idea what's going to happen in the world, what clients need, who's changing jobs or particular media. It's just this fluid environment. So if I were to predict what's going to happen in five years, the prediction is it's unpredictable. It's still going to be fast. It's going to be content based. It'll be uh, hyper focused, hyper local, um, global let yet local. Um, and as it pertains to what we do, it's just staying up to those trends, right? Who's covering what? What's the narrative? What's happening in the world that impacts our clients? And staying on top of that every single day. It's a monotonous process, but that's what we have to do. At some point, there'll be some new tool. There'll be some new social network. Like we weren't talking about TikTok six years ago. Now it's it's all the rage, right? There'll be some new channel, some new echo, some new podcast, some new platform somewhere that will be yet another way for us to leverage from a PR thought leadership perspective. But you know, if I could predict what's going to happen in the next five years, I'd be a rich man. But for now, I stay in the news cycle today and I'll focus on the news cycle tomorrow. That was Don dropping a hint that you should follow him on TikTok and um enjoy all the wonderful content that he has over there. I would say the next five years of PR is where you get your news. And we've seen for the past 10 years, less and less individuals are getting their news from a newspaper article or a TV station. Right now, we're heading into a congressional election where misinformation on social media is at its highest. It's been in a decade, and we've seen from the 2016 trend, um, 2020 election, that social media accounts are going to start cracking down harder and harder on what is news and misinformation that ends up on social media. So I could see instead of an influencer having a social media account talking about news, I think CNN might have their own Instagram account or Instagram TV or real account that provides you direct news where I can get my news. Let's say you watch Fox News. You want to listen to Hannity. Hannity is not on TV anymore. He is for the boomer generation, but he's directly on your phone and watching that, not just clip it, but like actually possibly having an hour of each day where that person is on social media. Twitter does a really great job of this. They're doing more and more reporting and you could listen in to different things, such as the January 6th hearings. I think we are shrinking our TVs and having them in our pockets. So it's a, not only a 24 hour news cycle, but it's a, honestly within the hour news can change. So it's about making sure that we understand the evolution of how people read, listen, and view media and find the cool innovators that are doing fun things on social media or different platforms and how we can pitch them how this story is worth reading on an iPhone or watching on TikTok.
Mike's point about technology impacting PR is dead on. Um, people will get their information where they feel most comfortable. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube, uh, reading the newspaper, TV news, all of it, none of it, word of mouth. So as PR professionals and as, a, as an agency that helps companies communicate to audiences, it's a reason why we have a variety of people that are experts at different in different channels at different times doing different things because it just takes all those channels at once. So going back to your original question about what's going to be next, there'll just be more access, different channels, more video, more short form video. And when I, when I mean short, I'm talking 10 seconds, 20 seconds, a reel or an Instagram um, a story. So it's just hyper focused, short form video, and then just every single channel at your disposal and then some. So again, there'll be some cool kid somewhere in some garage creating some new platform that we will all have to embrace. It'll be the latest and greatest, but it'll be yet another way to get content. 